Hello, hello, Crafty Crandall here. As evidenced by the title of this video, today I'm going to be exploring cheap versus expensive watercolor supplies. Here you see in front of me my cheap watercolor supplies. I ended up getting all of these supplies for around, I want to say $12 total. Um, it was, here I'll pull out the receipt for you. Yeah, so all of these t uh, art supplies were marked at $4.99, $10.99, and $6.99, and then were marked down almost half off on each of them. So I got these for a bargain price, and I am going to compare all of these supplies to all of my expensive watercolor supplies, which I have here. So I have my Hannibal paper block, I have my Sennelier watercolors and my silver black velvet brushes, and we are going to compare the two. I chose to do it this way instead of just comparing watercolors alone because I figured if you couldn't afford some of the more expensive supplies, then chances were you weren't going to be able to afford, you know, the paper and the uh, brushes as well. So I figured I would do a completely cheap version and then a completely expensive version just to kind of add some comparison uh, in that manner. Without any further ado, let's jump into the swatches of these paints just as I kind of explore them a little bit and then I will jump into creating a painting with both supplies so that you can see the difference in performance and just generally how they look. All right, so opening up the watercolors, I see that there is actually a brush included. I did not know that there was going to be a brush included with the set, which is why I bought a pack of cheap brushes. So I'll use this one as well. They also include here a tube of watercolor, which is white. So I don't really understand that, but we will... I mean, I never use white watercolor anyway, so I, I was about to say that I'll use it, but I don't know that I will because I never use it. Um, white watercolor can be really useful for making your colors more pastel or opaque, but often if I'm using watercolors, I want the transparent look. If I wanted something more opaque, I would go for a gouache, so not sure if I'm going to use this. Regardless though, here are the watercolors. There are two uh, separate kind of pan holders, and they are cake watercolors. They are kind of chalky, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I don't know if my, my other watercolors do that. Hang on, let's check. Let's choose a finger that hasn't been done yet. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a little bit. You can definitely see the pigmentation, so, I mean, I don't think that's unusual. It was just kind of an odd feeling because they are so chalky. But moving on, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet all of the colors and then I will go ahead and swatch them here for you. I will try to also use up some of the brushes as well so that you can see all of that. To be honest, I think that the swatching process went fairly well overall. Here you can see all of the colors that were included in this Master's Touch Fine Art Studio watercolor set. And overall, the clarity of the colors or like the, the trueness of the colors was pretty spot on, I have to say. Like what the colors looked like in the pans is what they looked like when you swatched them. 
Therefore, what I then wanted to do is go back and kind of put the colors into an order that made a lot more sense to me. Which this set made it very easy to do that because all of the colors were in their own little pans and they had little places where you can put the pans back in. So it was super convenient to rearrange this palette in any way that you want to do so. And I really appreciated that function of this palette. I definitely wanted to have the colors organized so that when I was looking for a specific color to include in my painting that I would know how to find it or know where to find it. So that was definitely a nice touch. All right, so as you can see, I let the swatches dry and some of the colors like this one, this one, this one, and this one kind of break down once they've dried. Um, so I am not really sure what that's all about, but we're gonna give it a try. Not sure how well these paints will mix or anything, but we're gonna try. I have here my sketch, all sketched out. Uh, this is the reference photo that I am working with. So I got this off of uh, Pixabay. And I have actually sketched it not only on this paper, but also on my Hannah Mool paper. So I've got both my sketches sketched out and I am going to go ahead and start painting. I will probably start with this one and then as like stuff is drying, I'll probably switch to the other one and back and forth until both paintings are complete. Moving into actually completing the paintings for this video, uh, I would say that honestly, these cheap watercolors kind of like surprised me. They worked really well. I actually love how this painting ended up turning out. I think that the reason why the watercolors didn't look or necessarily come out as well in the skin tone for the cheap watercolors is because I could have stood to have worked them a little bit more as far as blending and like softening off the edges, but I think that was more so like a me problem than a paint problem. <laughs> I think that a more skilled watercolorist would have had a lot more success in doing that than I did, uh, which, you know, I might have just had more patience using my regular watercolors to make the skin tone look better. But overall, I didn't really have to fight with these watercolors as much as I thought that I would. They were really easy to use. The colors uh, are decent. I like the color selection. I think it was relatively easy to achieve the tone that I was looking for. And uh, overall, I think that the watercolors like far surpassed expectations as far as being so darn cheap. Um, it just goes to show you that you can create really good art no matter what type of supply you're using. It truly doesn't matter. Um, art is, you know, the skill of the artist. It's not the supplies that you're using. So if you are a beginner in watercolor or if you are interested in trying out watercolor, I would so very highly recommend picking up a set of these watercolors or any, any cheap watercolor set that you have access to that will let you just get into painting. Literally all you need is a bit of paper. I would recommend a paper that is watercolor specific because you need paper that's going to hold the water. That would be my only stipulation is if you're going to try watercolor, buy watercolor specific paper. The paper that I bought again was watercolor specific. It was $7 for the whole pad of paper and I got it for half off. So you can find cheap watercolor out there, watercolor paper out there. It just might not be, you know, cotton based or 100% or cotton paper, which you don't need that <laughs> to just start out with watercolor. Literally, this is all you need. You need that, a singular brush and some water. So I highly encourage you if you are interested in watercolor to just go out and try that because I was blown away by how good these watercolors were. Now here you see me doing a close-up. Unfortunately, the only close-up shots that I got were with my expensive watercolors. And as you can see in the close-up of the expensive uh, portrait, I definitely did a better job of, again, like softening off a lot of the shadows and the facial structure and like just making the skin tone more even as a, a, a real human's skin tone is. 
Um, but that being said, I think I actually ended up liking the finished illustration from the cheap watercolors more so when you see them side by side like pause the video let me know what you think because i am so curious to know again part of it is likely in my sketch <laughs> the sketch for both obviously isn't the same so that kind of plays into your opinion but just based on like the color choice and the watercolors alone i think that both of them were really well. I think that it was a, definitely a comparable experience and I think this just goes to show that you don't need expensive supplies. So if you have any takeaway from this video, please let that be it and please just get into creating. If you are interested in watercolor at all, I highly recommend it. That will be all for this video. Please let me know if you liked it by giving me a thumbs up and or subscribing to my channel down below. I really appreciate it. I post new art and book related content every Tuesday and occasionally on Friday. Thank you guys again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>